what if partition set of natural numbers into uh, scales of a set, of your set A1 to AK? In fact, fine. It is sufficient to do this for just all numbers whose prime factors are uh, P1 and B. So it is sufficient to uh, partition sets of numbers with prime factors. set to partition all numbers whose prime factors are P1 and PD, but uh, you can avoid some prime factors. So prime factors are really a subset of this, right? Then, uh, yes, okay, minus. All right, uh, you can first um, can first tell the numbers with such prime factors, and then mm -hmm. you can multiply um, this telling, multiply each element of this telling by each natural number with none of these prime factors. Yes, okay. So. Uh, Let's call, I will call this, uh, I will not, okay, I will not call this mean thing. I will say, so, yes, the idea is, indeed, uh, if you take this partitioning and you ta attach to it every multiple of this partitioning with what you multiply, something that's relatively prime to P1 and PD, then you will partition all natural numbers. So, indeed, uh, this partition, by every number relatively prime to P1 P uh, is a partition of the natural. Basically, every natural number expressed as a number, the product of a number that is relatively prime to this times a number whose prime factors are only this. Uh, we'll get to examples later, but as a quick remark, for example, if you take a set that consists of only powers of two, uh, and you can partition all powers, uh, you can partition the set of all powers of two, then you can multiply this by every odd number, and you will get a partition of all, all natural numbers.
I apologize for the use of um, uh, bad convention of variable usage. But from now on, we will basically not use this definition of s. We'll just use s to be a, is a set of d dimensional last one. So under this map, which sends uh, a positive integer with these prime factors to such a tuple, we'll send our set s that we want to be tileable to a set s of d-dimensional lattice points. So what does it mean for uh, s to partition n? What does this translate to in terms of our set s of d, d tuples? Yes? Uh, I predict it's like a basis. Uh, lattice is one of all bases, bases. That is uh, an important concept we'll get to. But um, let's see. I'll write this out. So if we want n times s, so if we want n to be equal to the short union of uh, equals n one s the short union n two s the short union so on and so forth, and infinite uh, partitioning of n. Then this becomes, well, this is our lattice in the array. The uh, n1 times s does what to our set of s and points? So at, if you multiply each number in s, what is that by, 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 a, by a fixed constant n1? What does this do to our set of points? Shift it. Correct. It translates it. So this is basically, this, this is actually n1 <coughs> of the notation. Whatever the point n1 corresponds to, you add that to s and you get an, uh, a translated set of points which correspond to the n1 times s. Yes, question? So if like n1 is divisible by things that are not, like the original p prime, so is it just like p does not there? Oh, well, we are now working in, in the only numbers we care about now are numbers of this form. Um, if you want to partition numbers of this form, your numbers n1, n2, dot, 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 are also going to be of this form. So, uh, we don't run into issues. Okay. Yes? What exactly do you mean by partition? Partition. Uh, I, let's see. I will, here, I can find partition. Um, so, a partition is, and I'll just use the example of n. means, well, their union has to be n, and each of them are uh, pairwise disjoint. Union of a bond, n, and a on intersection. Okay, are we good with the definition? Okay, I'll get back to Tyler, turning us into d dimensional lattice point problem. Um, so, we have, uh, what well, scaling our set really becomes translating our set of points, S, uh, by some amount, and we want to cover our entire lattice N0 at infinity. This is what we want to cover. So, uh, I will, let's see. Multiples of a set, right? Mm -hmm. Like, how do you get one then? Is that just 
one. One is multiple of one. So that has to be the original set? Yes, one does have to be in your set. We'll, we'll see why this is true. It'll also be apparent with uh, our tally thing, which is basically one plus one plus one zero, right? The origin. The way you're going to get well, the origin is, well, zero has to be in your set S. Okay, question? But if you have one, when you're doing like union of like n times the set, can you just get every natural number just by multiplying one and then? Oh, well, here we are not, uh, let's see, there, we're not, un uh, we are union, we're partitioning n into a bunch of scalars, but we're not partitioning it into every scalar. Uh, uh, um, so oh, okay. we're taking so some values of n, an okay. infinite collection of values of n that partition n, basically, yeah. that partition your natural numbers. Um, certainly, if you took every multiple of s, then you'll have a lot of overlap. Yeah. OK. So uh, I'll write this as, uh, so you have a bunch of values t, right? a bunch of d-dimensional points t. I'll call this set, set of t, I'll call it, I'll pronounce this as your big set sheet, big t. So I'll write this as n0 to the b equals s plus t. This is the direct sum of s plus less and t equaling n0 to the b. Uh, so here's the poll. Our entire class can be, if you, wanted to, if you wanted to summarize our question, you could just write s plus t equals n0 to the b. That is an equivalent question. Um, S we want to be finite, and T is an infinite set. Also, what do I mean by S plus T? It means we're taking the set of all uh, S, little s, plus little t, where little s is in S, and little t is in T. And furthermore, when we write this, we actually have the implication that uh, all of these values, as you range over S and T, are going to be distinct. All right, are we following? Good. OK, uh, that was a lot of notation. Let's do some examples. OK, uh, we have a two-dimensional vertical on a two-dimensional lattice. <laughs> 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 OK, uh, so as Martha noted, the first thing is your set of points S must contain Origin zero. Uh, this is because we're adding s to a set t of t. t is also a set of points in zero to b. So our translation will only translate our set up and to the right. So the only way to cover zero is to actually have zero in your set. So uh, the set of one point is not very interesting. So let's talk about sets, sets of two points. What do you guys think? Uh, which, which sets of two points can our, our title can pile this? Lattice plan. So, I'll let you think about it for a minute. So in the two-dimensional case, we're taking 0, 0, and 1, 1, right? So S is example. S is uh, set 0, 0, and 1, 1. OK, and how do we tile, how do we tile this last Uh, well, actually, let's get to this. 
by considering do other sets of two points on every set of two points. Every set of two points work. So uh, we play all sets uh, the origin which will be is zero and any point P uh, are private. And basically you do the same thing. So here. Um, here's your lattice. So does anybody want to give me an example of a set of three points containing the origin of force? Uh, and tell me whether they think it's tileable or not tileable. Yes? So the set of the origin one one zero one is not tileable. Good example. So let's see. Let's take our set, our first set, zero, zero, one, one, zero, one. So, why is it not tileable? Oh, uh, you can make it one, zero. Yeah, one, zero. This is a problem. Um, one, zero, well, you're going to have to tile it with zero, zero, but we run into an overlap of just one. Uh, zero, zero, one, one, two, two works similarly with L's. You can, each point will tile a bunch of L shapes. And I'll, I think it's not too difficult to justify that you can tile the plane with 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. Okay, I'll do a quick general example of three points. What about, let's say we have a configuration of three points that looks like this. So, uh, 0, 0, A, B, and C, B, where, let's say, A is less than, so, 0 is less than A, less than C, and uh, zero is less than B, B, less than B. A general configuration of points that looks like this. Uh, do you think this can tell us, uh, can this tell the place? Yes, why? I'm recording your, to your equation, not how the equation. Okay, so the bureau, yeah, well, the, um, the reason <laughs> I chose this as an example is actually precisely because of this. I'll discuss this very soon, but uh, the original theorem one, which is, it is hidden here. This theorem uh, will become a theorem about the fact that tileable sets will have a unique largest point. I'll talk about this one. Uh, but, okay. Let's see. Say so again. I will not further the diagram. Uh, what happens if you try to tile the plane? Well, 
one derivative will have to be followed by zero. Right? So you start with one derivative. Uh, this will tell you that you have to tell uh, you have to add one zero. Okay, so you'll have uh, yeah, four. So you'll have to make this tile, right? and analogously, you'll have to continue making this tile. Okay, same thing with the zero comma one. One point by point <coughs> greater than in every coordinate. Yes. Yeah. So here he comes. S contains a maximal point. So hold up. Mm -hmm. The working intersection of that theorem would have a, a greater than or equal to. So like the bias, right? Greater than or equal to. Well, the only number equal to. Well, I mean, it could be greater than or equal to, um, like one of these, one of these, um, right? One of these a ones you have to the exponent. Sure, one sure. Of them these exponents equal, are not all of them. Yeah, uh, these exponents are just. So what I mean is, you can actually have something like this, right? Uh, your maximum point is one comma one. Okay. But you can have coordinates that are equal to. Got it. Just that everything has to be contained in. The text. Okay. So that argument over there, how does that work when you have, like, for example, a point at uh, 2, oh. A point at 2, comma, oh. Well, this argument is actually sort of difficult to generalize it, uh, it to n points, or to a large number of points with large number of dimensions. But it gives a good, the reason I brought it up is, okay. first of all, it, it shows you why, well, like, how a set that doesn't contain a maximal point could fail. Right. And second of all, actually, uh, they're actually, <laughs> The idea of taking the smallest point that you have covered <coughs> and covering it with precisely zero, you have to cover it with zero, uh, is a very useful idea in, in this. Oh. So it's greater than or equal to any coordinate to all the other. Yes. So actually, uh, not a, a not a maximal point. Let's actually we'll we'll need a few definitions, including what on earth a maximal point exactly is to clear all the confusion. So. Uh, hang on with me. I'll need a few minutes for a couple of definitions, then we'll get to we'll be able to use these definitions to phrase some cool stuff. So, uh, first definition. Two. Uh, okay. A uh, n zero to the d is what I call a lattice octant. It's an octant. It's but it's also lattice, right? So what I, what do I mean by lattice? A lattice uh, span by that basic vector is equal to dv. Uh, I am using linear algebra terminology, but uh, familiar, familiarity with linear algebra is not necessary for, for this class. So this is a set of points and d1, d1, plus e, d1, e, d1. 
where in this case we really care about what are these coordinates are non zero. by maximal part. Here we go. Definition. To define some kind of maximality, we, we need an order of on parts. Right? So we'll define the atomic order. OK, well, uh, first of all, actually, if we have a point of this form, it is going to be Okay. 